So they were eager to compliment Slim with his own label deal. His destiny was in his own hands, as well as the destiny of many others. His style of music was fueled by the streets, and he represented them both well. The end of Slim was a rapper, songwriter from New Orleans, and years of experience as an artist in the industry gave him the proper knowledge on how to be effective as a record label CEO. He left No Limit Records in the early 2000s and was putting together major plans to take his own piece of the industry's pie. Cutthroat Committee was the movement in his roster consisted of real street lyricists who spent their lives in their lyrics. Slim had proved himself with Koch Records through explosive record sales on his prior album that was distributed through them, so they were eager to compliment Slim with his own label deal. His destiny was in his own hands, as well as the destiny of many others. His style of music was fueled by the streets, and he represented them both well, the industry and the streets. Y'all about to see this, this is a video yeah, call. I don't give a what feature myself, Soldier Slim, and my new artist, Tipo, you know, and, yeah. and their video really is crucial. Yeah. I directed it, don't give we're gonna shock the world. Slim had reached yeah. national yeah. status with No Limit Records, but wasn't as effective as he could have been. His level of fame expanded as far as No Limit could take yeah. him, but he still had lots more room to grow. A label deal with Slim as the CEO was the move, and his cutthroat committee soldiers were in position for such, recording and preparing their albums to be released on the label. But unfortunately, a tragedy that still remains a mystery cut them all short of their chances of fame damn that boy can sing he good you said you were gonna be a star tell me where i signed that how long do you think it takes to get famous you saw what you're singing you could blow i'm telling you man i'm on my way he was almost famous You understand? I'm gonna do my thing. You understand what I'm saying? And keep it real. You know me, Jugger. Yeah, hold it down for my dog. You understand what I'm saying? Real, keep it real. You feel me? We don't give a what. When you mention New Orleans, the Magnolia Projects, or one of the realest rappers to ever touch the microphone, Soldier Slim easily comes to mind. Off the porch at an early age, he began accumulating life experiences that most people could only see in movies. Slim later used those experiences through the power of song to support himself, his family, as well as become a major figure in hip hop. I got plans bigger than the desire project. He was born a hustler and serviced the neighborhood in several ways. Fresh into his teenage years on his Magnolia Project front porch, he opened shop, a barber shop. More like a chair and a pair of clippers used as tools to make money, and he was good at it. But Central City New Orleans had a way of bringing out the monster in people. Slim run-ins with the law started early on in his life, and it seemed once it got started, it just wouldn't stop. When my grandma sat down, I had to talk, she was like, you know, when daddy first started going to jail, they just switched out fucking with That's like that poor dude, he always had something good. A short-term heroin addiction led Slim to several armed robberies, one of which turned sour and resulted in Slim being shot and jailed, all of which added to his image as a rapper and made him even more official in the streets. By the early 2000s, Soldier's rap career had taken off and was well established, but he only got to enjoy it in portions due to his incarceration. After business disagreements with No Limit Records, Slim decided to leave, started his own situation and called it Cutthroat Committee. Cutthroat Committee to volunteer it through the years. You see what I'm saying? Right. Cutthroat Committee is spelled different. You know what I'm saying? It's spelled my way. C-O-M-I-T-T-Y. Cutthroat Committee was Slim's bridge to becoming a boss among bosses. And many of his underlings tickets out of stardom. He used his experiences as an artist to land a label deal that was suitable for him and his team. And now all he had to do was complete albums. And that's exactly what they were doing. We trying to live that life. Seems like a motherfucking scheme. Fuck it, grab a triple beam. It's about time to wake up some dope and get you in. Nigga talking shit, I got to push the shit in and make it. Dollar quick, it's got to get it all the time. Huh, I'm on time, never on, on time. It's a motherfucking killer. It's a fucking killer at your snatcher. Like a nigga pulls the snatcher, get up in your nigga. Uh, it's me, uh, I'm coming through with a three. Yes, 223, I mean the three. Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm from. You get your fucking head a rock, you get your fucking 